So when we talk about grace, um, for me, I see grace and the grace of God as that mercy that takes you to unfamiliar places. It takes you to places that are beyond your imagination and beyond your abilities. And that is where adventure comes in. In order for you to walk with God, with the grace of God, you have to have a sense of adventure. People say God has a sense of humor. You have to have a sense of humor. But beyond that, you have to have a sense of adventure to allow the Spirit, to allow grace, and to allow God to take you to unfamiliar places. And that is the adventure side. But with that, God expects from you to be accountable in your journey. God expects from you to be obedient in your journey. And obedience is about taking a full accountability for every action, for every word you speak, and for every deed that you perform against another. One of the things that people don't know about me is that I have a very adventurous spirit and quite a playful side in me. I can't, I can't really say where it comes from. I think partly it is something that I'm born with. Um, there's a part of me that even though I'm composed and I'm an indoors person, but there's always a part of me that wants to just break free. But I certainly think that a large part of it is influenced by my grandfather. He was, in as much as again, people knew him at church as a very formal person, a leader. There was a very playful side to him and also a very free side to him. Being adventurous also allows you as a leader to live outside of the box, to put yourself out in uncomfortable situations, unfamiliar territories that bring out the intuitive but also the primitive side in you. It allows you as a leader to be responsive. You meet situations that are unfamiliar and you have to respond from a natural perspective and not a scripted uh, response. And that's one of the things I love about it. And I think it's important for every leader to have a sense of adventure because if you are going to lead change in an organization and if you are going to take people into unfamiliar territories, you must have experienced that yourself. You must have allowed yourself to be in situations where you are out of your comfort zone. Leadership can be a trap for a lot of people and a formal office or an official office can entrap you into a particular way of thinking, a particular way of, be of behaving and it can feel very safe. And being out in a space that is open and free allows your mind to just wander around and allows you the sense of freedom that your role or your office doesn't allow you. And I think that for me has influenced my spirituality from a sense of, firstly, faith and spirituality is about being free in your heart, in your soul, and being weightless almost and allowing yourself to just float. So being out in the, in the open allows you to trust in a force that's bigger than yourself. It allows you to let go of, of your limitations, let go of your restrictions, and trust that God, the life force, the universe, has got everything under control and it's there to hold you. But it also allows you to get into those places within yourself where you've got your own fears and it allows you to overcome fear and see how far you can go. So what is your threshold? And those are important lessons to bring back into leadership because as a leader, you cannot lead people to places where you have not been. And there are instances in leadership where you take people into spaces where they're afraid to go. And adventure or being adventurous allows you to again go in there without a sense of fear and without a sense of any limitations or boundaries. And when people see that you are comfortable and composed in those situations, it allows them to, to become about it. Now the flip side of adventure is that you have to also be accountable, being accountable for the decisions that you take, being accountable for the places that you take people, and sometimes being accountable for the mistakes that happen. I remember an incident where when I went skydiving, I had a bad landing and I broke my ankle. And I had to take full accountability for the fact that it was a decision that I made, that it was an experience that I wanted, and I enjoyed it, but it came with consequences. And I fully embrace that. Sometimes in leadership, we take decisions and we go through experiences 
And as good as they may be, or well-intentioned as they are, they may sometimes lead to certain injuries. And it is important as a leader to take full accountability. Especially now, where we are leading a generation of people that are questioning, people that are curious, people that are open-minded and they understand the world broader than the church. As a leader, you cannot take a decision or lead people to places where you are not willing to take accountability for the consequences of your decision. I believe that leaders need to be accountable about their own personal lives. But beyond that, be accountable for the material resources that people are placing in their hands. Part of the reason we are in the space that we are in as a church, broadly in the world, is because there is an element where members and followers have placed too much trust in their leaders and they have deferred a lot of responsibility, spiritual responsibility, on their leaders and they are not questioning, they are not holding their leaders accountable. And that has led to a surge of leaders that sometimes teach certain things that are harmful to people's spirituality and psychological well-being. I believe that leaders need to be accountable about their own personal lives, but beyond that be accountable for the material resources that people are placing in their hands. Church is a space where right now a lot of people make themselves vulnerable to the leaders that lead them in front. I think it is only fair that people ask for leaders to be accountable to them in an open way. So as part of driving accountability, one of the things that I did when I started leading the church in 99, especially in early 2000, is reviving some of the governance structures which had become weak after the death of the previous leader in the church. And I made sure that first of all, on a quarterly basis, we've got quarterly leadership meetings. So we have set up a regional structure where all leaders meet on a quarterly basis three times a year. And the last meeting at the end of the year is a joint meeting, which we call the annual general assembly, where I get to open up about any and every issue pertaining to the church. I get to have my decisions tested by the broader leadership in the church. And I get to have everybody input into that decision-making process and they have ownership of the decisions. I think most importantly, it's about devolving power and not centralizing power. Devolving power to all leadership structures and empowering your leaders for them to also take full part of any decision that has been taken in the church and own it. My leadership team and I have such an open relationship that we talk about the implementation of whatever decision that we have made. We talk about the impact of those decisions on the church, but we also talk about the viability of those decisions. And they are able to give feedback as to the adoption of those changes, if it's changes, or those initiatives that we are driving. And I'm able to hold them accountable because they are fully part of the decision-making process. And I think it's easier to do that when people have been part of the decision as opposed to when decisions are imposed on them and they simply have to implement. Oh,